Hey everybody, this is Cedric from 3D Bandit and today I'll be showing you how to make labels on bottles. Uh, <laughs> and also how to properly give different materials on uh, to uh, yeah, bottles and yeah, you can use it for different kinds of stuff like if you need decals on certain objects uh, or labels on toys or whatnot. Um, so yeah, I made this like six months ago. Uh, and yeah, the technique is pretty straightforward. Uh, you just need to know how, and I'm going to show you that. And uh, as a small bonus, I'm going to show you how to do embedded glass. So uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. Uh, first things first, you want to make a label. So if you want to uh, have a label on your puzzle, uh, you want to make these labels. Uh, you don't want to make these labels because they're ugly, because I suck at graphic design, but well. <laughs> um, so two things that are important here. Uh, first of all, you want to keep enough space between your labels. That's going to be important for later. Uh, and you want to have an alpha mask. So normally when you open up a new Photoshop file, you get a white background. Well, you can change this by pressing background contents transparent and working on that. You can also do this in Illustrator if you want, um, or you just want to uh, uncheck the background layer. So yeah, you want to have this because this is gonna um, this is gonna save us having to make uh, like an extra texture that says where. Uh, where to put the uh, labels and where to put the gloss. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna save this uh, under text touch and then, uh, PNG and save this right here. I already have a copy, but let's write it. Merging here, okay, yeah, and let's save it. I don't know, but my Photoshop is really slow in saving PNGs. This is also a 4K texture. So it's quite big. You don't need to have this big, but you want to have a lot of detail because the label is the more most well one of the most important parts of the um, bottle, especially if you want to show it off if it's the central object. Um, so you want to have like a big texture space to get the detail in. So I'll just wait for Photoshop uh, to finish up here. Well, I guess we can go and land in the meantime. So I've got a basic scene set up here with a bottle. Um, this bottle has no uh, shaders, whatnot. Um, for the rest of the scene, it has a basic HDRI and the sunlight, nothing more. So yeah, uh, let's check out Photoshop. Uh, yeah, it saved it, okay. Um, first things first. I uh, want to go to the node editor and make a new shader. So uh, I'm going to throw the diffuse away. Sorry, diffuse. And bring in the glass shader. Uh, I didn't make a like something in the bottle. Uh, I just made a solid bottle. I'm just going to make the glass like pretty dark. Just going to copy this. This is a fast way of achieving like a little bit more realistic without having too much fuzzle in oh wait I'm gonna change these two yeah without having too much fuzz in the uh yeah, something like that. It's a it's a bottle with something in it. So yeah. <laughs> um once we have this we wanna bring in the labels. So uh, I'm gonna go here. And uh, texture, image texture, open, text up, labels. So, I'm going to preview this. This is not going to show up because we don't have assigned any UVs to it yet. So, if you check here, if you press Ctrl T. Also, let me put on my screencast keys real quick. Um, can I put screen? No. Okay, um, anyway, uh, so we don't have any UV information on the bottle to actually bring in the labels. I'm all for procedural, but, well, procedural without texture space, 
but if you want to have labels and stuff, you need UVs. So, uh, yeah, but they're pretty easy to make for this, these kinds of situations. So, first thing, we want to select our bottle, uh, go to this tab, it's uh, data, and we have UV maps here. You, it'll automatically generate a UV once you start messing with the UVs or unwrap the bottle. But I'm going to manually make two UV maps. Yes, that's right. You can make multiple UV maps. And for the first one, I'm going to put in uh, the labels. And the second one, I'm already going to prepare for the embedded glass. This way we can put, uh, we can use the same shader for the entire glass bottle. Um, without having to mess with different shaders that have different, well, or different objects uh, that have different texture maps and stuff. We just can make multiple UV maps. You want to make the UV maps beforehand. You want to kind of think about, okay, how many textures do I have? And that's how many UV maps you want to have. I have two textures. So first of all, the labels and for later, the embedded gloss. So I want to have two UV maps. I'm going to select the first one. And then we're going to um, start like going to UV image editor, bring in the labels. And then we're going to start like assigning what should be where. First of all, I'm going to select the entire object. And you can see that you have these strange squares here. I'm going to scale these down and put them down here in a small corner. Yeah, that should be fine. Um, this is to normally it should work anyway, but this is to make sure uh, the rest of the faces don't get any big ideas and, and try to take a texture or something. So yeah, um, I'm going into uh, what's it called uh, in orthographic view and uh, I'm gonna go into face mode and then I'm gonna want to select the faces I want the big uh, the big label on. I'm just gonna do this by selecting all of these. Here you go. It should be half of them. This is approximately the size of the label. Maybe it's a bit bigger. There you go. Just want to select uh, the ones you want the label on. Press U, unwrap, and uh, go in here and fit this on here. You want to be careful not to uh, go over the edge too much because this will actually show up back here. And because of the buffer, it doesn't matter this much. But if you want to have, uh, if you have textures on the edges of your texture space, uh, this thing that overlaps is going to take textures from here. So it tiles basically. So if you now preview this, we should have a texture. Yay. So that's awesome. Super awesome. Um, I'm back to perspective mode. So that looks already good. So I wanted to have these, this label down here. And here you can see more the well, where am we gonna put it? Here you can see more the reason why the buffer is important. Because if I press unwrap now and get this and yeah, I wanna have this on here like this. Here you can already see that it overlaps. And once you start messing with it like this, you're gonna stretch your UV and you don't want that. So I'm going to try and make this bigger, like this, and wrap it again. And now we can make it smaller and fit it on like this. Perfect. So now if we go in there, we have a cool label here. Just to get nice. That's cool. So you can see here the importance of having a big texture space is that, yeah. Now we can actually uh, zoom in and have a... Uh, a pixely uh, label. So yeah, uh, now that we have assigned the UV space to the um, labels, going back to the node editor, and uh, we're gonna combine this with the gloss shader. So uh, I'm gonna give these image textures a quick diffuse shader. I'll maybe also combine this with a uh, Fresnel and a glossy. All right, looks good. And put the glossy a bit down. I have a bit of shiny, shiny labels. That looks pretty good. 
Uh, yeah, it's a bit. Uh, yeah, it looks good. Uh, I just want to put it all white. Did I do this? No. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, how do we combine this now with the glass shader? Well, a lot of people would seem to think, oh yeah, you need to make an extra texture uh, for the alpha mask and then just bring in like a mix shader. But the PNGs already have an alpha mask in them. It's any in information of the texture. So you don't need an extra uh, texture to do this. So just bring in the mix shader. And if you check the alpha here, you can see that the PNG um, shows like the opacity uh, information where the um, where there is pixel data is white and where there is none or where it's total opaque, it's black. So white is going to be in the mix shader in the bottom node. So we want to make this, we want to change this um, to actually get the labels in the bottom. And then we co uh, connect the alpha to the mix shader. And if we then check, we get, hey, our bottle. Let's see a little bit more clear. Let me light this up again. So yeah, and this is how you get labels. It's as easy as that. So next thing, how do you get different materials on one object? This also seems to be a question I received. Um, so uh, if you have like different objects like this top, I want to have this top to have a different material. Um, first thing you want to make sure, and let's have a subsurface here. Let's uh, click this button so we can preview. If you, uh, you can assign, hmm, how do I say this? You want to have an extra edge uh, on the edge of, of your material to not get stretched or like it doesn't come to the defined edge. Uh, to make this more clear, let's take this as an example, uh, as the edge of our material. So first I want to select the faces I want to have that material so I'm just gonna go here it's like all of these I'm gonna go here click this little plus sign press new and uh, yeah for instance let's just make this a um, quick uh, basic Fresnel and glossy and diffuse put it on red a bit darker okay assign and uh, the problem with this is, is that you don't have a lot of control of where this edge is because of the subsurface. Because if you check in edit mode, you will see that it actually it changes position. position. So this can be a problem if, if you want to really have like the control in edit mode of where this edge is going to be. So uh, the thing we're going to do is, is uncheck this button and go into edge mode. Uh, select the edge and actually press Control B and scroll one up and then we bevel this and have an extra edge and if we yeah, if we check this now this is disturbing quite a lot of the uh, the flow but normally yeah that's better um, and then you see that the other two edges slip away because of the subsurface but the one edge stays at exactly the same position so that's what we want to have um, so now I can uh, select all the faces again here we go press ctrl plus to get this extra edge here and then we want to go to the material assign and uh, just to be sure press ctrl i to first selection and assign this once more so yeah, that's, and there you go. Now you have another material uh, on your bottle. And that's how you do it without like making more objects or having to fundle with in the node editor with extra masks and stuff. You can just make it uh, face based. So yeah. Um, oh yeah, now I have a little bonus for you where I'll, uh, Oh yeah, one more thing. If you have like a texture that you want to have like a label that goes all the way around. Yeah, let's show that real quick. Like for instance, I have this edge loop and I want to have it all the way around. 
And if you use the technique I showed you, you will see if you just unwrap this that oh, you have a circle and that's not good because you have to make a circle texture and it's going to stretch out here more than here and it's hard to do and whatnot. So pretty straightforward if you know something about UV editing. Just press select one edge, control E, and mark this as a seam. This is going to cut in the unwrap like you would cut a paper and if you unwrap this now we have a pretty straight yeah you know, like i told the neck is a little bit uh, distorted so yeah a little bit of a curved edge here but it's not bad i'm just gonna select this and put them right here use this texture real quick and then you can see we have a nice ring around the uh around the bottle so yeah um, the last thing I want to show you is how to make embedded glass. So if we go into here and we check uh, this texture. What is this is, is a cool logo. Um, <laughs> no, this is actually just a, a bunch of uh, Photoshop. Uh, there are cool shapes in here as you can use to decorate your bottle. Uh, and what I did then was uh, put a smart filter on it with a Gaussian blur. Uh, to actually, if if this is just black and white, you, you're not going to see it because uh, we're going to use this as a bump map. And if it's just black and white, it's going to have a very hard edge and it's not going to be as visible as you would put like a blur on it. And then the ramp from black to white will serve as the physical ramp that um, uh, Blender will use to uh, simulate depth. So yeah. Let's uh, save this uh, in the text set. I'm going to save this as a PSD for a reason, uh, real quick. Uh, you're going to see why in a minute. Um, this is because Blender is awesome and can actually load in, uh, yeah, load in uh, different, well, load in PSDs. It's what I want to say. I don't know what happened there. Um, so yeah, when you were, uh, as you, if, if you remember correctly, uh, while well, my English is really, uh, dropping down, <laughs> we made two UV maps. Problem is if you select the second one, um, or if you press this one, it will F up your texture. So we need a way to, uh, tell uh, the nodes or tell cycles, which UV map to use. So we're going to delete this node. And we're actually going to put in input UV map. This is part of the um, Note Wrangler uh, add-on. You can check the video on the Note Wrangler here. Also, if you want to have some explanation how I do certain stuff in the notes. Um, so yeah, you want to enable the Note Wrangler add-on in the settings to uh, get this. And here we can actually check our UV maps. I'm just going to check the labels and put them in here. And then it doesn't matter which one I take. It will always take the labels UV maps for this. So yeah, uh, I want to go in image editor and actually open up the image, the PSD. And you will see that Blender has absolutely no problem loading in the PSD, which is nice. And then we want to go, well, select the embedded gloss. And then you're going to see where, uh, where we, ha uh, we have this basic texture space again again take it scale it down put it all down here um, and then we want to check where to put the embedded gloss um, well I suppose we can put it here it's kind of a square thing so uh, yeah, this should do I wrap this and uh, yeah put it like this very nice okay so now we go back in the well as you can see now uh, if you select all of them this is embedded gloss uv and this is the labels uv so yeah um now we go back into node editor and um we're gonna try and bring in this uh thing so we're gonna copy the image texture node. uh i know we already have this in here somewhere the embedded bsd and if you're gonna preview this you're gonna see that um, 
it's not going to show correctly. It's going to use the UV maps or the embedded glass. But if we just bring in the UV map here, put some embedded glass, put it in here, we have a different UV space. So for these images, we have this UV space, and for this image, we have the other UV space, uh, UV map. So that's nice. Um, this is going to make sure that you can like properly control your shaders without having to fundal too much with textures and change them and you can just use different textures to achieve what you want to achieve. So I'm going to bring in vector bump. I'm going to bring this in here and you can see we have this bump map. I'm going to invert this to actually bring this out. This already looks nice. And we want to connect this bump to all the normals of the gloss shader. So to the Fresnel, so it actually shows the Fresnel stuff in here, and to the book gloss. Um, and if you're gonna preview this, look at that, looks really nice. Yeah, problem with the bump map is that you cannot see the depth uh, of it. If you wanna have that, if you really wanna zoom in and have the depth of the bump map, this is just for like smaller details, okay, yeah sure if, if this is somewhere on the bottom of the map you can use this technique if you really wanted to stick out that's it's a bit more uh yeah well, not problematic it's possible but then you just need to uh pick the color of the image texture put them in the displacement map and this uh at the moment is going to bring in the same results um go into where is this object data and put the displacement not on bump but on true and then you can see the first problem is that is it's just distorting at the moment that's because the bottle doesn't have enough subdivision to handle this so you want to bring in the view like five and that's gonna really slow down your system so um, you can see it like kind of lagging here now but if you want to have that geometry in your bottle that's really the only way to do it. Um, you can maybe manually give more detail to that part of the mesh. That could also be a way, but it's building the uh, BVH. But then you have like, uh, if you zoom in here, you really have this in the model. I think it's at the moment inverted, so it's in the bottle. Um, so if you go in here, Invert this and build it again. Yeah, this is always going to take a while to uh, do, and then you can like really put it out. But it's it's not my favorite way to work because yeah, and there you have it. Like it's a bit hard now. If you want to put it a bit down, you put in a math node, multiply it by. Point three. And the problem also is every time you change it, you need to rebuild it so we can build the mesh with your uh, displacement. So yeah, it's kind of nitpicky, but um, it gets you the results you want if you push up the subdivisions real high. And here you can see like, yeah, it sticks out. So that's nice. So yeah, it looks nice. It also gets you a little bit more physically accurate um, information. Like if you render this out, it's gonna be a bit better. I'm put this down again. So yeah, that's how you get the uh, embedded glass. Uh, also, if you wanna make the embedded glass really like obvious, you wanna have lights that emphasize the. Uh, uh, oh. I don't wanna do that. Okay. Uh, so, for instance, you want to bring in a plane, put it on 90 degrees, uh, give this an emission shader. There are just a couple of examples how you can use this to. Yeah, you can see that like my render takes a long time to load this. Uh, oh, yeah. If you have your lights set up in the right direction. Lights are very important, uh, especially if you want to have a lot of detail. If you want to show this, uh, you're going to need like 
a light that reflects on the surface of it. And we can see a little bit uh, coming through now. So yeah, uh, <laughs> you want to play with some lights to actually get the detail out of this. Or if you have a transparent bottle, this should be uh, mostly visible. So uh, if you're going here, yeah, you can see that it's pretty visible. So, so yeah, that's how you make uh, bottles. Uh, I hope you make a bit more beautiful bottles than me. Um, <laughs> uh, but now you understand, I hope, the basics of labels and embedded clause and how to do it properly. Uh, if you have any more questions, um, uh, put them in the comment section below. Uh, uh, I always try to respond to them um, quickly and clearly. Uh, I hope this uh, this tutorial was a bit clear. Um, I know I ramble a lot, but well, you'll forgive me uh, <laughs> eventually. So yeah, I'll just put this back on uh, to and uh, put this back on. Uh, bump okay here we go get a little bit more faster render so yeah hope you enjoyed this tutorial like and subscribe for if you want to see uh, more awesome tutorials and uh, oh yeah one more thing if you want to know how to light this properly or light anything properly uh, you totally should check out Gleb Alexandrov's channel uh, if you go through his entire channel you know how to light this properly <laughs> Um, so that's certainly, I'll put a link down below, um, check Creative Shrimp. I think I already mentioned him in one of my videos, but no, I can't mention him enough. He's awesome. So yeah, uh, keep on blending, uh, be awesome, and uh, this is a long outro. <laughs> See ya!